Good morning, guys. <coughs> morning, morning. That sounded terrible. <laughs> morning, morning. Morning, morning. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode, guys. <laughs> we're working on the keel, but this time, instead of destroying it... Yeah, we're not fighting it anymore. Yeah. Now we're making a fixed keel. So, so we're uh, rebuilding it, which is fantastic. Rebuilding it. We haven't done fiberglassing for a while, so it's something <laughs> different. Yeah, we never do any fiberglassing around never. here. <laughs> but stand by guys, I reckon about another week, um, both these keels should be then uh, pretty much glassed up and the last couple of little patches as well, so then it's going to be lots of fairing filler and then paint. <sighs> Did you actually say paint? Did I say paint? I don't know. That's going to be coming in the next few episodes. Well, we'll see. This is now proof out there that it's possible. <laughs> I've opened my mouth on camera now, I'm going to have to do it on a really. So anyone that's not busy, not working, in a lockdown situation, grab yourself a flight, bring a sandboard, yep. and uh, see, you, see you next week. <laughs> Enjoy the episode, guys. We are Davy and Erica, an adventurous couple who has taken on the challenge of a lifetime. We are rebuilding a hurricane-damaged catamaran, and we are starting to see progress of all our hard work. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. When faced with a challenge, look for a way, not a way out. So, morning guys. Um, this morning I thought I'd show you the inside of the bilge. Um, I'm going to take you downstairs in a moment and then show you what's going on down there. Um, but just a, a little bit of an update. So as you know, we've decided to fiberglass on the keels. Um, I've done a lot of, the last couple of days I haven't really filmed it because it was just boring sanding and grinding to preparation of the delamination around the keels. Um, and now what we're going to do is basically just, just describe what we found and then we're going to get cracking and actually do the job. Um, so just to show you from the inside here on the keel, as you can see it's very very light. I can actually, I don't know if that will show on camera, but it's so thin I can push it with my finger and it flexes. Um, a lot of this old glass here that you can see, this is where I did a little bit of patchwork before we left um, Puerto Rico, um, just because there was some cracking that I wasn't 100% sure on. So when you see from the outside and you see a little bit of blackening and stuff like that, do not worry, I've ground it back as far as possible. Um, and the blackening areas, they're basically underneath this fiberglass, which when I come back to do the inside in a few weeks time, all this is gonna get ground back and get re-glassed from the inside as well. I didn't wanna go any deeper, make massive holes. What's the point? I've got a form and I've got like micromillimeters of fiberglass there to give me the shape and everything to build that super strong keel. So I just wanted to show you what, what it was from the inside. There's also a couple of places, if I turn this around, into the keel back here. A couple of places where I was trying to grind it out that I actually went through the pocket. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to grab some just some duct tape basically, go across these um, just so that when I put the the uh, thickened epoxy up into the the void that I've made, um, it won't then squirt inside the boat. It's going to make it easier for the sanding and everything later, and use less product today, less wastage. All right, guys. So as I mentioned from inside, I was going to show you the outside where I've been doing the grinding. This is the areas where it's getting super super thin. Um, super flexible but as I've graded it back here is nice and solid until it gets thinner 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 um, there is some blackening in these areas but as I said I do not want to go through I want a shape to work with I'm gonna do the grinding from the inside um, so this side is prepared um, there's a couple of spots which are looking a little bit just very slightly on the damp side um, reason for this this isn't um, that the keel is still wet or anything still wet inside um, we had a lot of rain last night and also a lot of dew on the boat in the morning so this morning what I'm doing is I'm running fans I've got the vacuum cleaner which is uh, blowing warm air into the keel and that's coming out all along this pocket um, and also I've been going along with uh, with an alcohol spraying that on about every 20 minutes which helps suck out any moisture also going across after each alcohol application with um, acetone so I'm going to continue that for a couple of hours while I do some preparation cut some glass and all that sort of stuff but we're going to get cracking with that in just a second before we do that I just want to introduce you to Manuel who's helping us out and he's uh, started work on little sister so let's go uh, let's go find Manuel good morning Manuel I want to introduce you to the YouTube world. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, good morning. All right, so what Manuel's working on here, um, if you remember a couple, few episodes back, I did show that we started to do some osmosis repairs. Um, these were some of the bigger repairs where we did the, the thickened epoxy, then small patches, and then big patches across the top. Um, Manuel is continuing this for me. A lot of this area here are smaller areas. So 
hopefully the camera's going to pick this up. They haven't got such definition lines of, uh, of marker, if you will. But you can see the smaller one under here, then the bigger patch across the top. And there's, there's lots and lots of this. So yesterday, Manuel and myself, um, we spent a bit of time teaching Manuel how to do this. Um, the way we're doing it, again, one first thing we did is really scrub the boat clean with water a couple of days previous. Um, once that was then dried, it removed the dust um, and also anything that would have come from the osmosis, anything that was left over residue of it drying the boat. Um, so then once that's done, we've, we do an acetone wash and then for example, this hole here, it's a little bit bigger than, uh, than some of the others. It's got a bit of a dip, probably less than a millimeter, but still got a bit of a dip. This means it needs patching. So what uh, Manuel does is he mixes up the thickened epoxy, um, gets to like a peanut butter sort of texture, if you will spoons that in and then takes a small patch puts a small patch over the top and then after this wets it out again and then after puts a bigger patch along the top of it he did lots of this on this side yesterday and also on the inside once the sun started to hit this side of the boat it gets difficult and your, your chemicals start to go off too quick so you have to sort of work around the conditions what we've working outdoors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a time lapse on manuel and let's see uh, let's see how well he does this morning So it's a lot quicker the, the, to go on than it is to come off, eh? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but still, sticky, sticky, horrible job. <laughs> I thought you liked fiberglassing, babe. Yeah, some days. <laughs> Maybe less days in a row. Well, let's get cracking and uh, then we'll move on to the fun stuff of painting. Oh, it farted. Look at the concentration on that face. So much concentration. <laughs> you better gonna tell me off for talking <laughs> while you're working. On back, yeah. <laughs> Come on guys, stick up for me. Come on, tell me this is enough for this side. Don't make me mix another one. Might be, just. I'm not sure. Oh, it's Before they fall off your head. <laughs> Okay, so before that's cured, I want to get a um, chemical bond of some biaxal. So I'm starting with some small strips. Um, we don't have very much of this at all, and it's very difficult to find. Um, but I've got enough to go around the first strip of the keel. So that'll go around the fillet and touch on base. And then I'll go back onto the other cloth that I've got, which is good, but I just have to put lots more layers and in different angles. So this is a good solid first start, and that I can build up from that. So I want to get this on while it's still a chemical bond. Good enough for you, missus. Right. Yes. It looks so good, babe. Alrighty, so we've got the biaxle on. Um, and what I've also done, so the biaxle comes down to about this level here um, and up to about here. And then what I've done is just a very small strip of the eight ounce. Um, I've run that across the top. Um, it's, yeah, it's starting to get a bit thick. It's starting to go a bit, go off a little bit. So uh, I think I'm gonna actually pretty much leave this one here. And then what we'll do is we'll, that's a, that's a good start, a good solid start with a chemical bond over the top of the fillet. So that makes me happy with the join. Um, tomorrow morning we can sand this slightly um, 
This afternoon I'll actually do the other side. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have an afternoon nap, uh, and then this afternoon I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the other side. Um, so then we'd have gone all the way around this keel today uh, with a chemical bond and two layers of glass. And then tomorrow we'll work away getting bigger and bigger and bigger, going all the way up here and also all the way down the keel. So uh, yeah, come tomorrow afternoon we should be pretty good. It's already it's already getting stronger. solid again. Yeah. yeah. It had a bit of a wobble on, didn't it, when it was... It didn't want to come off, but it had a wobble on. Yeah. Uh, it's already getting solid again. Sweet! Fantastic! Alright guys, let's go and uh, check in with Manuel, see how he's doing. Um, he's not on camera at the moment, but if any of you guys are coming to Lupron and you're looking to get any work done on your boats, i definitely say look him up. Um, I asked him this morning if we could put his phone number in the description of this video, um, and he was more than happy with that. Um, highly, highly recommend this guy. So, you want some help around here? Look him up. He can help you with everything. Anything you need in Lupron, this is your man. Looking good. You feel it? Yeah. Alright, how's it going, Manuel? Good. Inspection time, huh? Always <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking good. There's a lot of patches, eh? Okay. Um, another thing I want to mention guys with this boat, so don't think that this is the finished product So what Manuel is doing now with all these small patches uh, Once this is done the boat will obviously get a full wash down to get rid of any ammo blush um, It'll also get a sanding um, and then afterwards what Manuel is going to do I'll probably have to give him a hand because it's quite windy around here But we're going to put sheets of glass along the top so it's going to get a complete re-glass This is just taking out and repairing all the divots that we had to go deep for so this is basically stage one. So there's going to be, this is like one layer of epoxy, then we're going to um, sand it back and then we are going to put on the one layer of glass. After that then we will roll on epoxy. After that then again we'll let that cure, we'll give it a light sanding, a wash and a light sanding, and then after that there'll be the epoxy barrier coat. So this boat is going to be super protected from osmosis once we're finished. Hi there guys. So, done a bit of sanding this morning. Um, I said I was going to do some glassing on the other side yesterday afternoon. Uh, we changed our minds. The sun was in the wrong position um, and decided to let's take it easy for the afternoon. So we went actually and had a little cocktail in town because Easter's coming up and they're going to close everything down. So we're going to be working on the boat the next few days and not going out. So we took advantage of that yesterday afternoon. So this morning I've done some sanding on the side that I actually fixed up yesterday and it's come out absolutely beautiful. Um, so this is a uh, work in progress, uh, but super happy with it. the keel, super solid. Uh, this morning as well, not so long ago, I was running a time lapse um, and I was working on this side. So I was gonna make the fillet. So fill up in the, in the gap, in the void, and then make the fillet. Uh, unfortunately, my mix wasn't quite right. It was a little bit on too runny side. So this probably shows up in the time lapse. I'm sure Erica will edit that in somehow, but I was just fighting it and it was running out, running out. It looked like it was starting to settle, but I didn't like it in the end because obviously I want that void filled and with it filling down, that means that falling down, sorry, not filling down. Um, it means that it wouldn't have been as high up as I would have liked it. So I've scraped it out. Um, I used the excess to go over a few of the bits. As you can see here, we have repaired. We did the, uh, we put the, uh, what's it called, the foam? We put the foam in yesterday and I've now fixed over these holes. So these areas are done which is fantastic. Uh, but I'm gonna leave this section now until tomorrow because I want this to kick off properly so I can sand it back. It's gonna be a nightmare to sand because it's got cavaseal in it. Anyway, I'll sand it back in the morning and I'll reattempt that with a better mixture. Um, but also here in the yard, oh, I'm speaking to the boys today and I've managed to find some matting. So, uh, so I believe this is a type of woven matting. It's in many, many different directions and stitched together. Um, they've got a big roll of it. Yeah, this one, this end doesn't look very good, but this was just a trial piece. So this part is good. The first few feet of this is in very good condition. The rest is just trash. Um, but I'm going to give that a go this afternoon, work with this, because they've offered it to me for quite a good price. So I'm going to see how this works with our resin, and I'm going to work on the inside of the keel and uh, try and just try and go a little bit further with this side, really. And then uh, tomorrow, crack on with the other side. Also, just a quick update, what's going on with little sister. So, Manuel, he's just gone off to lunch, uh, but he's doing a fantastic job. So, uh, you see all these circles and patches? So, he's filling in all the air, still tacky. He's just been working on this area. 
filling in these areas some slightly thickened epoxy and then putting the circles over the top. He's doing a great job coming along here. Um, he's done a load on the starboard keel. Again, he's moving around uh, due to the sun, the temperatures and stuff like that. But I reckon he's probably quarter of the way through the boat. There's a lot of hours of work to do over here. So super impressed. Well done, Manuel. Ah, you come to see that I'm doing it right this time. Yeah, so we haven't actually told people what happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so luckily when I was trying to put this fillet into the, what you call like the void, on the um, outside. Yeah, on the outside. So luckily the camera was just on um, time lapse because there was a lot of swearing going on. So I did, I think I mentioned it on camera that I thought I just made too runny a mix. Yeah. But after going back to it in the afternoon, so I'm just trying to do the Ziploc bag up. Um, after going back to it in the afternoon, I realized it hadn't cured at all. So then looking back at my table and a little bit of thoughts and while I was mixing it, there was probably eight people under the boat, everyone talking to me at the same time and I'm trying to do this. So really, can't blame anyone else but me, but I'm 100% sure now. I mixed part A, um, so sorry, three, it's three to one. So I did like six ounces of part A and then I'm supposed to add two parts of part B. I'm pretty sure I put six ounces of part A and two parts of part A. So of course it's never going to cure. And the funny thing is, I was down here talking to Davey because I was telling him a few ideas about God knows what. Um, but I'm, I can pretty much remember it in my brain that yes, he did A and A. And I remember being like, is, what is he doing that for? Did he put too much of the catalyst and now he has to make up for it by putting more of the A? But I didn't say anything. So I probably should have said something. And <laughs> what do you mean probably? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, I've just literally just got started. Just trying to get it deep up in there. That looks better already. Yeah, <laughs> actually hanging in there. Well, it had a chemical reaction, it's gone thicker. <laughs> So I know, th thank you guys. Lots of you commented and said, uh, do it, you know, like uh, when you're icing a cake. Um, I did already know this technique, but we love the comments. So thanks guys, keep them coming if you see something. Cause maybe, you know, I don't definitely don't know everything. That's for sure. And again, just for some of you who may not have watched all of our videos, we are actually live. I know we've said that many times, but. Yeah, a few people obviously haven't realized that though. But so. if you comment, there is a good chance that you will actually help us out if it's something important. <laughs> Yeah, we do listen. Yeah, so. Well, try to. Well, most of the time. <laughs> Get some different angles. <laughs> Alright guys, so we want to do a massive shout out to all of our patrons who have been with us. Um, from the beginning and some of them who have just jumped on. Um, thank you so much. You have no idea how much it helps. Um, especially with everything that's going on at the moment. So thank you so much. What's happening? <laughs> I need to reuse the bag. <laughs> it's too slippery, I can't open it. Hey, you and your bloopers, I know what you're looking for. <laughs> it's too slippery. You can do it, babe. I don't know if I can. I need a rag, but something is disposable. Can you look over here for me? See, in the, inside that box is some blue paper towel. Can you grab a piece of that for me? Because it's disposable. Sure. This one, this one, this one. To help with the slippery hand. Yeah, stop with the slippery hand. Not in there. Where is it? Let me off, please. Gracias. Is that going to work? Yeah. Already worked. I just didn't want to use one of the good rags. Because this stuff should actually set today. What? Can you actually put part A and, part and B? <laughs> It's because there's nobody sat under the boat. I know, it was crazy. The last few days have been crazy. There's been so many people around. Well, they what? They took out two new boats. Out of, no, two? Yeah. yeah. A couple of boats came out. Boats and came out. there's people wanting to have meetings. And then everyone turns up under our boat because it's nice and shaded. And there's an ice box full of beer. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a hectic couple of days. Anyway, back to mixing. So, part A. And part B. I'd be a much happier little boat. 
I don't know exactly when it was. Um, I think probably a couple months back, we were talking about what color we wanted to do the boat. Um, after having some thought about it, I think we might just stick with white and do some cool graphics on the side with like stickers from a yeah, company. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I want to um, jump in there. Um, because this is all perfect white underneath here. Um, so why? It's going to make it a lot harder and to be honest, um, time consuming, time expensive. consuming and expense as well. And also to get a real deep color like we were thinking about, um, it would have actually taken probably more skill than I don't want to practice on this boat yeah. um, so white's going to be easier to spray but the reason I jumped back in guys was if any of you got any ideas again but thinking graphic wise on a white boat open yeah. for suggestions so throw us any ideas out there yeah. or if anyone's got any design or little plan things if you want to send us any ideas we you never put, know it might end up on the boat we want to put the logo on the front but then maybe we'll be open to some graphic yeah. ideas but I want to funk it up a little bit yeah yeah for sure anyway I've got to mix this stuff but again so this bit here it's already white so it makes it kind of easier all we have to do is really sand and polish it um, and then we just want to get back in the water as quickly as possible at this point before hurricane season. So whatever we can do to make the process go quicker, we're going to try. So cheers. Touched on it in any of our videos. These motorbikes that are under our boat, they're not ours. They are pretty cool. Um, they're a couple friends of ours. Maybe once we're back in the water, we might go on some adventures. Who knows? What do you reckon? Yeah, well, Darren and Bill said we can borrow them. And we have got the little moped. Yeah, uh, where is it? It's in front of little sister. I moved it because it was in the way. Yeah. We just haven't had time. We've got to work, work, work. She's a slave driver, guys. Slave driver. That's our moped. Yeah, so like we were saying, there's been two boats hauled out this week. So this little catamaran here, I think it's a Gemini. But they've already had their bottom job done super quick. So they'll probably go back in the water really soon. And then our friend's boat over there that's still on the trailer. It's like a pirate ship. Super cool boat. That one was hauled out as well. So some stuff has been happening here in the yard. So, always exciting. But it's kind of funny, because stuff tends to happen within like three days. Three days will be really, really busy. And then three weeks will be like dead and nothing happens. Um, so it's kind of funny how that works. But I suppose that's anywhere. Today is Good Friday. So it's super quiet in the yard. I don't think anyone's coming to work today. So we made sure we're topped up on water. We made sure they topped up the jug on top of the roof for water for the showers. Cause there'll probably be a quiet weekend around here. That's kind of nice. And he's still mixing. To make it like peanut butter. Mix, mix, mix. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Sorry, guys, one last thought for this video. Um, I just asked Davey the question. Um, because now these keels are going to be fixed keels and they're going to be stuck on, they're not coming off, is there any reason to have this little hole here? Because this hole was for... It's for towing the keel for home. For towing the keel home. If you were to hit something and the keel were to come off, sacrificial keel, you could tow it home and fix it later. But now that these keels are going to be completely fixed on, is there any reason that we should have this hole? Davey reckons that when he's scrubbing the bottom, he could use it as like a finger hole to hold on while he's uh, cleaning the bottom of the boat. But besides that, is there any reason? What do you think? Leave it in the comments.